Hi, it's Louise from Spiral Bright Insight and I wanted to come and do a video for you that just introduces the a very sort of top line overview of the energies that we are working with in 2024. Now, if you've not come across my channel before. My name's Louise. I am a galactic astrologer and an intuitive and I work with traditional astrology and fixed star galactic astrology to basically support people to find out more about who they are, to find out more about their star seed and galactic lineage, lineage their sole purpose, their gifts, challenges, blocks and so on. So if you'd like to find out more about my work you can find me on, on spiralbright.co.uk. This video is going to be fairly top line. There's a lot to say about um, the astrology for 2024, but I don't want to go on for hours and hours. So I'm just going to talk about the key themes and mainly the outer planets and what they're doing. But um, just to sort of in, get started, to kick things off, I always look at numerology because I find there's a beautiful... <laughs> a beautiful synergy between numerology and astrology and we are working with a number eight year an eight universal year which we get from adding all the digits in the date together so two plus two plus four equals eight mm -hmm. and when we're in an eight universal year the themes are very much on power which can be in both its expressions so disempowerment seeing where we've been giving our power away but also empowerment to see how we can step into more of our power and claim our power and our sovereignty and um, the eight is very much about success it is about prosperity it is about abundance and it is the eighth card in the tarot deck is the card of strength. So we're working with that energy. And the eight is also the infinity symbol. So there is a real sense of flow, of continuity, of karma and of what um, goes around, comes around. So if we have been acting for, um, you know, in our greatest and highest good with integrity, truth and honesty, then we're likely to reap the rewards of that. But equally, if we haven't been acting with integrity um, and, um, you know, for the benefit of others, then that is also likely to come back and bite us. So, um, you know, we do reap what we have sowed and the energy um, this year is likely to reveal that quite strongly. And the eight is the number of the divine feminine. It is also linked to manifestation. So we will hopefully be working more with manifestation and realising what we can actually achieve through it when we set our mind to um, what we want to invite in. It is the number of integrity. There is a sense here that with the eight, we are going to become more aware of a higher purpose, of a higher reason for being here. So taking it sort of beyond the mundane physical reality if you will. Um, the eight is a number of balance because we have, you know, the same sort of the, the two sides of the eight are equal. So we're looking to balance the material and the spiritual worlds very much in 2024. And also as the eighth house in astrology in the birth chart is linked to Scorpio, which is plutonic in nature, there is a real strong sense of huge and deep transformation which will be very spiritual so a very strong powerful number to be um influencing us for the whole of 2024 and um, but if we move on to the astrology again and um, before i look at specific planets and um, there is a lot of air in our charts in 2024 because we have Pluto moving into Aquarius, we have Jupiter will transit through Gemini, Sedna is moving into Gemini as well and the south node is in Libra so that adds a lot of air to the astrology and when there is a lot of air we are thinking about, well it's very mental, we're going to be in our heads a lot, um, the air is about consciousness, it's about energy, it's about frequency, and see um, and it's also information so we are likely to be dealing with receiving processing sharing a lot of information in 2024 it's going to affect our ideas what we know what we think we know and our beliefs um, and it's also going to be very 
quick. So if you thought 2023 was a fast year, 2024 is not going to be any slower. In fact, it could potentially go even quicker. And of course, air is very difficult to contain, to control, to censor, to block, to cut off. Um, so um, I do get the sense that you know, with the eight as well, there's going to be a lot of flow, but there's going to be a lot of momentum. And when things start to get moving, it's going to be impossible to stop. It will just get quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, and also with the eight and with the air, I do get the sense that um, we are going to sort of be faced with one situation, one learning opportunity. We'll get through that and then the next one will be here straight away. So there's not going to be a lot of time to sort of catch our breath, to take a break. And there's not going to be a lot of downtime. This is a year where things are going to happen, you know, one, one thing after another. It's going to be very quick and it might feel um, quite overwhelming. But it's definitely a year where we are going to experience a shift in consciousness. And that is um, sort of backed up by the astrology. And we have got a few of our outer planets hitting the anoretic crisis degree point, which is the 29 degree point of the sign that they are in. This includes Pluto will be um, at 29. It's at 29 degrees um, this week. And as we come into January, it's still going to be at 29 degrees of Pluto of Capricorn. Sedna is at 29 degrees of Taurus. And later on in the year, Neptune is going to reach 29 degrees of Pisces. So this is very much um, when we get to 29 degrees of the sign, it is the last chance saloon for the planet to deal and work with the energy of that sign. So there can be a little bit of a push, a rush or a panic to complete and achieve everything that it wants to do. Now, um, the 29 degree point obviously is about energy endings as well and particularly in Pisces Neptune is right at the last degree of the entire zodiac so this is very much about endings and completion and very karmic energy so to have these three outer planets all at the anoretic degree point at some point during 2024 is a big deal so again it's just indicative that we are coming to the end of a cycle in a lot of ways. Um, we do have strong water because Saturn and Neptune are both in Pisces and that is going to really support um, a cleansing process. Um, potentially we're going to have a lot more flooding, a lot more physical water, but water also represents the emotions. So we may be feeling more emotional as well as being in our heads, obviously, with the strong air. Water is also very dissolving. So um, it's going to be, certainly, my next note is that there's very little earth in the chart for the entire year. The only real earth um, planet is Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus is not a particularly steady, stable, reliable energy because Uranus is about chaos, it's about breaking through, it's about awakening. Um, so it's going to be hard with all the air and strong water to find any sort of sense of sure footing or stability. Um, it's going to feel, um, yeah, it, it's going to feel unstable, quite frankly. Um, there's a lot of mutable energy as well, which means we have to be very adaptable. We were not going to really know what to expect, what's coming up. Um, so we need to be flexible and you know just go with the flow and if things happen that are unexpected we just have to sort of embrace and almost surrender to it because if we become too fixed and try to hold on what has always been we're going to find um that does not really work in our favor so um yeah attachment to the old is not really <laughs> it's not going to work this year so just looking at the sort of key outer planet movements, we have Pluto is going to be moving into Aquarius on the 20th of January. It's had a short stint in Aquarius in 2023, but it has actually been in Capricorn since 2008. So this is a big deal. And this is going to create a big shift in the energy that we are working with at a collective level. Now, Pluto in Aquarius is going to bring up themes of technology and how we use technology for, um, for our evolution. It's also going to potentially reveal where technolo technology has been 
been being used for um, nefarious purposes or purposes that are not for our greatest and highest good. And um, where things have been repressed and information has been hidden is likely to come out and be more um, exposed. We can expect quantum shifts, big shifts in sort of science, um, things also very quantum like time travel, um, portals, um, um, artificial intelligence, and even things like the galactic. So, you know, what is out there beyond um, beyond our Earth, beyond our physical Earth. Um, the weird will become mainstream, which is news. Well, it's um, music to my ears, for sure, um, given that, you know, the field that I work in. Um, and, you know, we are going to be really looking at what it is that makes us human. So with Aquarius, there is going to be a shift in power to the people. So rather than a top down sort of patriarchal structure that we've been working with for a long time, it's going to be more sort of bottom up. And we're going to see shifts over the next 20 years to that effect. But the main thing is that because Aquarius is the sign of the people, of the collective, of humanity at large, experiences that we have are likely to affect us all. Whereas in the past, if things have happened, it's usually been fairly isolated to a certain part of the world. It can be compartmentalised, obviously not for the people that are there experiencing it, but for a, a, everybody else and um, it's always been somewhere else whereas my feeling is with Pluto moving through Aquarius things that we experience that are helping to shift us um you know and shift our evolution and and our progression it's going to affect us all at a collective level much in the way that the pandemic did because the pandemic did affect the majority of people living on our planet and um, so there's likely to be other similar experiences i'm not saying there's another pandemic coming but um you know where things are happening it's um we won't really be able to turn a blind eye this time um so to speak so neptune is in pisces it still is in pisces it's going to be moving between 25 and 29 degrees of pisces um and it's been there since 2012 and it is coming to the end of a 160 year cycle so in 2020 Five, it's going to move into Aries. Um, now, this is um, Neptune and Pisces is very ethereal. It's very dreamy. It's all about imagination, about vision. But Pisces being the last sign of the zodiac is very karmic. It's about endings. It's about completion. It's about dissolving the old. Um, and there is going to be a sense of um, we that we may feel like we're in a void because we are between two realities or two um, cycles. You know, we're coming to the end of something, but we can't yet see what is coming in to replace it. Um, and obviously, you know, in our world, everything is cyclical. Things have to die and come to an end um, in order for the new to come in and for new things to be born. Um, with Neptune and Pisces, especially towards, you know, the third deacon is the very spiritual um, deacon um, of this sign. So we're going to be feeling more spiritual, a more sense of unity, hopefully coming through, much more compassionate stronger connections with our higher selves, um, with guides, with angelics, um, with the unseen. But we're also going to be um, questioning our reality to quite a large extent, I expect, um, because it's going to be hard to know what's real and what is not. And obviously, with um, our AI coming on board and technology um, sort of evolving and growing at a really quick pace, um, it is going to be you know, we're probably not going to recognise the world that we're living in over the next few years. Um, this void that I've mentioned can create mental health crisis. It can make people or us feel very lost, very unsure. Um, it's going to be hard to have boundaries, to really know what's going on. Um, with Neptune and Pisces, both water related you know again flooding that i mentioned with um saturn and neptune and pisces flooding is possible very high emotions um and a real need to or longing to escape um because um you know we might not really be sure about what where we are and what we're doing so um sometimes 
the easiest thing is just to run away, but I don't think that's going to be an option. <laughs> so we also have Saturn in Pisces and Saturn in Pisces moving between three and 19 degrees of this sign is really going to bring validation to our spiritual selves and our spiritual world. It is very much about a spiritual awakening, about spiritual mastery, spiritual maturity. Um, it's likely to bring more compassion, more imagination, um, and also as a strong sense of our sort of structures dissolving, even um, dissolving of time in the way we, that we have been working with it. Um, dissolving of the patriarchy, um, which again we've been seeing with Pluto through Capricorn. Um, but again, Saturn in Pisces is um, just coming through to add weight to that as well. And then Uranus is still in Taurus. Um, it's in the third deacon. It's moving between 19 and 27 degrees of Taurus this year. And this um, is very much about breaking apart um, and breaking through what we have always known. So fixed earth, where we've sort of felt safe and secure and known, you know, what, what we are and what we're doing. And um, Uranus is coming through to break that apart. Um, so we're going to, um, this is about awakening. Um, it is about shaking things up. It is about forcing us to reevaluate what really matters because Taurus is our values. Um, but also it's going to shake things up in terms of resources, our food, our energy supplies um, and our finances, our financial systems. Um, system. So there's big changes coming along in those areas. Um, I also see when I think of Uranus, Uranus is a lightning bolt. It's very Aquarian energy as well. And as Uranus is sort of moving through Taurus, I have this vision of um, sort of energetic energetics coming down from the skies, from the cosmos and hitting the earth to break up um, kind of our fixed ideas of who we are and what we are, which is going to work very well with Pluto and Aquarius and also with the galactic grand trine that I will talk about in a separate video. Um, so we may find, you know, some real changes in how we um, get and create our energy, how we grow our food. Um, I also wonder if if there is the potential of some more information being revealed about inner earth and what is actually below the surface um, because I've been looking at that recently learning about Agatha and um, what lies beneath or allegedly and um, so again again with this kind of breaking up the fixed earth I kind of have this vision of um, information coming to the surface about what it has been hidden and again with Pluto in Aquarius um, you know that is and Sedna in Gemini as well and um, this is all kind of part of the same thing it's, it's about new information coming through um, so Sedna is going to be moving into Gemini and Sedna has been in Taurus since 1965 so again this is a big Sedna is a fairly new archetype for us and um, lots of astrologers are talking about her now. She represents um, what is hidden beneath the surface, so deeply hidden things, deeply hidden in our subconscious. Um, she also represents um, the, um, the divine feminine who has been betrayed by the patriarchy and what can then happen when we let go of the control and dominance, when we have to renew and regenerate ourselves and adapt to a new way, which is what happened to Sedna when she was cast overboard and um, had to um, evolve and be able to, to be able to live beneath the surface of the water. And um, so this is about releasing us from the old from the old paradigms, rebirthing anew. But in Gemini, it's about information. So it's about information that is hidden in our subconscious, in our cellular structures is going to be coming forth um, to really help us understand more about who we are and where we've come from. Memories of other worlds are likely to be um, revealed and step forward. And um, it's about claiming our power when we are no longer controlled um, and actually being able to see where we have been controlled, where we might not have realised that. So what happens when we are able to break free? Um, 
So we have, obviously the nodes are still in Aries and Libra. So this is very much with the Aries North Node about claiming our sovereignty, standing on our own two feet and finding out who we are as individuals, but within the collective, um, of the uh, Pluto and Aquarius. Um, and we will have eclipses in these signs as well. So it will be boosting the energy. But I have done a video about the nodes on this axis already. And we have Chiron still moving through Aries. And again, I have done a video about Chiron in Aries. So I will link both those videos in the description box. But as I said, I didn't want to go on for too long. I don't ever want to do really, really long videos. Um, I will be doing a separate video about a galactic grand trine, which is going to be taking place. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But for the time being, um, I think just to kind of um, summarize, we can expect huge shifts in consciousness, not a lot of downtime, a lot of a mental activity, a lot of information coming forward and just a lot of speed. But whereas before it's, you know, it might have felt like we've sort of gone forward a bit and then it's it's repressed and it's hidden and like, sh sh you know, we can't sort of talk about that or think about that. It really feels that in 2024, there is going to be so much more disclosure and truth coming to the surface because with this air energy, it is very difficult to contain, curtail and control. And um, so, um, yeah, I think, you know, this is a really big, powerful and significant year for us at at so many levels and in so many ways so thank you so much if you've got to the end of this video thank you for watching thank you for being here please feel free to share your comments because it's always great to read what other people are thinking and um if you want to join my mailing list um you can join that on spiralbright.co.uk and um, for my monthly newsletter but thank you so much and i wish you very well for the festive season however you are celebrating it and much luck love abundance prosperity and joy for 2024 and i look forward to sharing lots more information um over the next months and year okay thanks very much